Dear students, now I am going to explain about PN junction diode characteristics under forward and reverse biasing. For that, we are going to discuss the viva questions and answers. So let me explain one by one. Before watching this video, please watch the series of semiconductors, types, PN junction, formation, everything so that you can understand this video very much clearly. Right? Let us get into the video now. So first question is, what is PN junction? So now you see PN. What is PN? P is nothing but P type semiconductor and N is nothing but N type semiconductor. So if P type and N type are combined together so that it produces PN junction in the middle. For example, this is P and this part is N. If these two are combined, this is the contact surface, right? So this portion is called PN junction, right? So the contact surface between the layers of P type and the N type semiconductor placed together so as to form PN junction, right? Next question. Give the symbol for a semiconductor diode. So diode is nothing but PN junction. So now how to draw the symbol? So this is the normal symbol generally we used to give P and N. P side is named it as anode. It is positive terminal and N type it is the cathode negative terminal. So generally this is positive terminal and this is negative terminal. PN junction is represented by this symbol in the circuit. Actually the arrow mark represents P type and the straight line represents the N type. Okay, so here anode, this is anode part and this is the cathode part, right? So this is the symbol generally we use in the circuit to represent PN junction. Next question is what is mean by biasing? Okay, the process of applying external voltage to PN junction is called biasing. We are, that means PN junction already we know that for this if you are applying the external voltage then it is called biasing. That process is called biasing. So what is meant by biasing? The process of applying external voltage to a PN junction is called biasing. Okay, we have two types of biasing. What are they? So first one is forward biasing and the second one is reverse biasing. These two are the types of biasing. The next question is, what is mean by forward biasing of a PN junction? Okay, what is that forward biasing? Already we know that P and N are there. This is the PN junction. Forward biasing means this is the external voltage. Okay, this part is the external voltage. P type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the N type is connected to negative terminal of the battery. So to represent battery, we use this symbol, right? One side positive and another side negative. So P should be connected to positive terminal and the N should be connected to negative terminal of the battery so that we can say the PN junction is forward biased. The same thing, what is mean by reverse biasing of a PN junction? So the previous case to be reversed, what is that? P type should be connected to negative terminal of the battery and the N type should be connected to positive terminal of the battery. Then we can say PN junction is reverse biased. Now you see, what is mean by semiconductor? Actually, we are talking about PN junction, P and the N junction, P type and the N type both belongs to semiconductor only. So we must know what is meant by semiconductor. So semiconductors are the substances having resistivity or conductivity lying between conductors and the insulators. Okay. So this is the diagram for conductor and this is for insulator and this is the middle one is semiconductor. So this diagram help you to understand what is the energy level diagram for semiconductor. Now you you see this diagram so here this is the conductor here valency band the lower one is valency band upper one is the conduction band so the valency band and the conduction band are overlapped with each other there won't be any gap there won't be any energy gap energy gap is equal to zero that's what in this case the conduction is possible right when we come to insulator this is the valency band and this is the conduction band so the gap is very much high so due to this gap we cannot make the conductivity possible over here that is the reason insulator does not conduct 
current okay it does not contact so this is what you have to understand but semiconductor lies between these two now you see this is the valency band and this is the conduction band very small amount of energy gap is there if you supply energy the electrons will move from valency band to conduction band so this is what the semiconductor is the substance lies between conductor and insulator in terms of conductivity okay and then resistivity anything we can say either conductivity or resistivity this properties lies between conductor and insulator it is not like conductor or not like insulator but it is the intermediate between conductor and insulator next question is what are the three types three types of materials based on electrical conductivity so just now we have discussed which is nothing but based on the electrical conductivity conductor insulator and then semiconductor so these are the three materials based on electrical conductivity right and the next what is electrical conductivity based on this only we classified the material so first we must know what is mean by electrical conductivity so it is a measure of how smoothly a body allows current to move through it take one material okay if you are applying the current how much smoothly it allows if it is allowing then it is called conductor if it is not at all allowing then it is called insulator if it allows half of that okay very small amount if it is allowing then we can consider it as semiconductor so this is what electrical conductivity electrical conductivity is a measure of how smoothly a body allows current to move through it right what is the relationship between resistivity and conductivity electrical conductivity both are reciprocal to each other inversely proportional if resistivity increases conductivity will be decreased if conductivity decreases resistivity will be more okay so that is what both are reciprocal to each other that means inversely proportional to each other right inversely proportional to each other and the next what are the types of semiconductors based on purity okay there are two types based on the purity of the semiconductor first one is called intrinsic semiconductor and the second one is extrinsic semiconductor next question is what is mean by doping okay doping is the process of addition of desirable impurity to a pure semiconductor previous question we have discussed based on the purity the semiconductor can be classified into two types one is intrinsic okay and another one is extrinsic so how the extrinsic semiconductor is made by adding the impurity okay so that process adding addition of impurity process is called the doping so doping is the process of addition of your desirable impurity to pure semiconductor so what for we are adding so that we can increase the conductivity so in order to increase its conductivity we are adding the impurities that process is called doping okay next question what is mean by intrinsic semiconductor the pure form of semiconductor is called intrinsic okay the pure form is called intrinsic so it does not have any impurities free from impurities so the pure form of semiconductor is called intrinsic semiconductor next what is mean by extrinsic semiconductor so the semiconductor in which impurities are added by using doping we are adding the impurities to the pure semiconductor so that it forms the extrinsic okay so we can remember this is the pure form and this is the impure form first case intrinsic is the pure form extrinsic is the impure form how the impurity is added by means of doping what are the two different types of impurities okay the impurities are trivalent and pentavalent impurities so in the outermost orbit some atoms will have only three valency electron that is called trivalent impurities and some uh, atoms will have four five valency electron that is called pentavalent impurities so generally semiconductors are tetravalent that's what we are going to choose either trivalent or pentavalent impurities okay next what are the charge carriers in pure semiconductor already we have discussed it is the pure that is intrinsic semiconductor so here electrons and holes are the charge carriers both will be considered because their densities are equal okay both are equal in number that is the reason in case of intrinsic semiconductor that is pure semiconductor both charge carriers are 
present okay that means electrons and holes are the charge carriers next in the same way what are the charge carriers in n type so n type means electrons are the majority charge carriers and holes are the minority that means electrons will be more in number comparatively with the holes okay so in n type semiconductor electrons are the majority charge carriers next question what are the charge carriers in p type now see for the case of p type holes are the majority charge carriers and electrons are the minority charge carriers it is the reverse for n type so p type means holes are the majority charge carriers what is depletion region in pn junction that means when p type and n type are combined together in the in that middle we are getting the pn junction right so near the pn junction only we will get the depletion layer how the depletion layer is formed when p type and n type are combined together then the diffusion of charge carriers will takes place due to the diffusion the area just around the junction should be completely ionized okay as a result there won't be any free electrons on n side that means nearer to the junction only not hole okay n side as well as on the p side no holes will be there so this region around the junction is depleted that means depletion is nothing but empty of mobile charge carriers is called depletion region okay so once p n p and n are combined together immediately the diffusion of charge carrier will takes place because of that reason completely ionized the region which is around the junction is completely ionized so that no free electrons on n side and no free holes on p side so that the region is empty of mobile charge carriers it is called the depletion region next question is what is the effect of forward and reverse biasing if you give forward biasing or reverse biasing what will happen to the pn junction that is the important for this experiment okay so see the diagram this diagram help you to understand the effect of forward and reverse biasing so generally if you are not giving any biasing this is the size of the depletion region right but when we give the forward biasing that means p type is connected to positive terminal and n type is connected to negative terminal the depletion region size that is the width of depletion region is decreased at one point of time it will be vanished okay this will happen for during the forward biasing so that the current will flow through the circuit right and the next one if we give the for reverse biasing that is p type is connected to positive terminal sorry negative terminal of the battery and the n type is connected to positive terminal of the battery then the width of the depletion region is increased the width of the depletion region will be increased so these are the effects when pn junction is forward and reverse biased next what is mean by junction potential barrier okay so now when that p and n are combined together in between it forms the junction and then depletion layer also so due to that one side positive ion and another side negative ions will be created so due to that reason certain potential difference will be created so that is called potential barrier that potential difference will act as the barrier for the further diffusion that's what it is called potential barrier so by seeing this diagram you can understand very much clearly now you see this is n region and this is p region so here electrons will be there and here holes are there so once these two are combined together immediately the diffusion will takes place the electron will move from n to p and the holes will move from p to n so near the junction the atoms will become ions by gaining and by donating and accepting the electrons so now this forms the depletion layer okay this is what we have discussed so now you see in this part positive potential under this side we will have the net negative potential so due to this ionization it forms the potential difference so that's what it is called potential barrier this how much potential is there difference is there that should be mentioned it as potential barrier now you see in n side high potential will be there in p side we have the negative potential lower potential so the potential difference produced across the junction that's what it is mentioned it as potential barrier because this potential will not allow the further diffusion that's what it will act as a barrier right 
Next question is explain the VI characteristics of PN junction. Okay, what are all the observations we have done after performing our experiment? See this diagram. We are performing forward biasing as well as reverse biasing. So this first quadrant explains the forward voltage and current characteristics. Okay, and this third quadrant explains reverse voltage and its reverse current. Okay, reverse current. So first we will discuss about the forward biasing. So here two diodes they mentioned silicon and germanium and silicon diode. So when we increase the voltage, it slow it will be zero after certain voltage it starts increasing and then it increases rapidly so for germanium diode the threshold voltage it may be mentioned it as threshold or knee voltage or cut in voltage cut in voltage so these are the names given here so from this voltage the current increases rapidly from the graph we can observe very clearly so for germanium diode the threshold voltage is 0.3 volt for silicon it is little higher that is 0.7 volt so this is the forward vi characteristics of pn junction right and next one is reverse biasing during reverse biasing we are giving the voltage in reverse direction and the current will be absorbed here so that the pattern will be like this actually in lab we used to perform from this part to this part so it looks like in the increasing order so we will get the graph like this okay because only this part we will perform in the lab so this is the vi characteristics of pn junction next question is what is cut in voltage just now we have discussed the forward voltage at which the current through pn junction starts increasing rapidly see here from here from this point it increases rapidly so that voltage is called cut in voltage what are the applications of pn junction so common applications i have given here diode application it acts as the rectifier switching devices zener diode Varactor diode. Varactor means variable reactants. Next, photodiodes, PN junction photodiodes, pin and avalanche photodiodes. In solar cell also PN junction, light emitting diode also PN junction, even laser diode also PN junction. So all are made up of PN junction only. So these are the applications of PN junction diode. I hope you understand this viva question and answers. Please go through that. If you have any doubt regarding this, you can ask me in the comment box. Thank you everyone.